Hmm. Well, this looks like trouble. What is this? Oh boy. Now the question is, how do you paint a shipping container? Can you paint a shipping container? It seems like Eric is up to something, so let's find out. Aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think did. he should be uh wearing some long sleeves in the event that he wipes out on the gravel. Cause you know it's gonna come. Hey guys and welcome back to the WT Farm Girl channel. Oh man, I can only imagine what is gonna be going down. Hey guys, so we're gonna be painting the shipping container today. I went to a uh, family farm and I picked up some gray. Um, this is smoke gray and it's an oil based enamel. So this gray, it didn't match perfect to the barn. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a little bit of black to it. It's gonna give it a little bit browner, darker gray color. And so what we're gonna do today we're gonna tint this gray a little bit. I think it's gonna be like an eight to one mixture. Could be a four to one mixture. We don't know until we add the black in. I've never used, this is a, this electric spray gun I got from Harbor Freight because our compressor's not big enough to supply enough air um, to paint this container. All right, so we're gonna be doing our color tinting on these little cups. They have little ratios on them. Um, and of course you're gonna want a respirator. And I recommend a paint suit because this enamel is very sticky paint. And yeah. So it's not it's not like the water-based paint that you're painting cars with. No, it's this some sticky it sticks to everything. So you probably don't want to do this in the house? No. You don't want to drag the shipping container inside and no. Oh yeah, that's definitely pretty strong stuff. So what are you doing right now? I'm just putting, I'm gonna go up to the four, four mark in here so I can add my black in. I wanna do a small amount first. Oh, so this is a tiny mixing cup. Yep, this, this is a is trial just, run. This is a trial. And then you've got the big cups for the like the regular stuff. Interesting. All right, so this is the color we have right now. And I, that's gonna take quite a bit of black in there to change it. This is gonna be a four. So it's basically, you're measuring it by liquid displacement. Right? You put your first color in and then you can measure how much of that color because it's all just gonna rise as well. Yeah, one this unit. is a four to one mixture. This first column is four, the second column is four. So when I do, it'll be one gallon of this and one pint of that. Yeah, it's definitely darker. I feel like it almost needs like some yellow in it. Some red. They did have a Ford brown there that was a Ford gray that was more browny color. Yeah. So I could check that out. Did I have chocolate chips with it too? Dang it. All right, so why did you decide to go with enamel paint? I mean, obviously someone can just go and get like cheap. tractor paint. This is tractor paint. Oh, this is tractor paint. So this is basically implement paint. Mm hmm Okay. So you could do this on any refinished equipment too. Now, do you have to go through and sand it first to prime it, or are you just gonna blow it on there? I'm just gonna spray it on there. This stuff sticks. Sticks to anything? Mm-hmm. Even politicians. <laughs> All right, so over here we have a reducer. Is this to thin it down going into the gun? Yep. Cause this, it can't spray that? No. So how do you know how much reducer to put in? Um, this gun came with a viscosity cup. 
that you'll test your paint and you want to 50 seconds. All right, we're going to show you guys in a little bit how to measure the viscosity so that it will go into the paint gun. If I can find a link for this paint gun on Amazon, I'll put it in the description down below. So check that out. I like that match. All right, so these are the three demos or four demos actually that we came up with. So uh, the original gray is right there. When Eric added black to it, you got that. There's no way we're gonna tint that color. So I ended up returning it. That was a smoke gray. I ended up getting a Ford gray. This right here is the Ford gray. It's kind of yellowy looking, right? It's like a tan color. So then right here we added a little bit of black, which was getting closer to the color we wanted. Yeah. Then right here we add a little bit more black, which is really, really close to what we want. So we now we know we can work with this color. You really wouldn't be able to even tell that was no. there, except for the fact that it's really shiny right yep. now. So now we just have to come out with the right, we have to get the right ratio <laughs> to black. All right guys, admit, right now in the comments. Which of you guys would just take some black and start dumping it into the can and just swishing it around? Okay, so we got our four parts. We're a little over. We got our four parts right there. So which, okay, which we're line a little, are we measuring we're, to? So we got to go to the top of the two right here. See, I'm to the uh, top of the two right there. So we got to go to the top of the two in this one column. See, there's okay. four to one. Oh, with the black. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right. This is, boy, this cup looks giant on the camera. <laughs> That's a really little cup. I know it. That's why I had to look at it in person. Like, oh, that's the tiny one. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to the top of that too. All right. So we're using liquid displacement, and it's slowly growing upwards. Science lesson here, guys. That looks pretty good. It's not bad. It could use a little bit more black, I think, though. I think what we'll do, we'll do four to one, and then just add half of this in there. Call it good. Yep. All right, guys, so we got all our supplies we need. We're doing one gallon of Ford Gray to one quart of gloss black. To that, we'll add one pint of hardener. I think that's a pint, half a pint, half a pint of hardener. And we will add reducer accordingly so you're expecting to have to do two sets of this? Yes. So here's one set so. and here's another set? That's correct. In this gun here, there is a cup that we will dip in our paint and Suzanne will time it and you want it to run out of the cup within 50 seconds. That will tell you you have the right consistency of the paint or thickness or whatever you want to call it. So what happens if you get it too thin? Could get. <laughs> it's probably better to too thin than too thick. You just have to be careful about getting runs with it. So. One thing of black. One thing of hardener. Are you going to be making dinner tonight too? Is this how you cook? This is my <laughs> special sauce. Secret mixture. Mmm, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Maybe we could put on swirly. That looks really good. Look at that. That is a great match. Look at that. I'm very pleased with that match. Awesome. That's not bad. <laughs> not bad. You ready? Yep. 50 seconds. Oh, that's going to be a, need a lot of thinner. Yeah, you can tell this stream is very thin coming out of it, too. You gonna dump a whole one in? I think so. Wouldn't you want to start with just a little bit? We could try half. Ooh. I mean, as thick as that stuff was. Ooh, that definitely looks thin. It's gotta get stirred in. It's better. Not thin enough though. Fifty. Hey. Wow. Yep, that's like one pretty good.
It's pretty good, huh? That fin looks very similar in color. What's that? So it definitely looks pretty similar in color. Looks a lot better, don't it? Yeah. All right, so comments down below. Do you think we should completely overhaul this thing to look just like the big barn and put a darker strip at the bottom, maybe edge a little white on the edges of this thing here? What do you think? Put it down below. Let me get the full effect here. All right, of course, you guys are seeing this on the camera, but so there's that, and then there's that. Of course, the air standing right in front of it. You could almost paint the corners the dark brown. I mean, you could honestly do it. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. You could go through and make it look like the little sister to the barn. First of all, you're going to be wondering why I'm wearing my not normal clothes. And the reason is that rash that I told you about yesterday. Um, it has exploded everywhere. And I've literally exhausted every single thing that it could possibly be from shingles to poison ivy to chicken pox, um, measles. I've looked at everything. And it doesn't fit on anything I've been able to find. No idea, can't go to the doctor because there's no doctor's offices open because of the COVID shutdown. So I'm pretty much screwed right now. It's gonna be a little hit or miss trying to get work done. But um, as it happens, we also have some kind of shocking news. So um, I don't know if I mentioned previously that Eric's dad um, was admitted to the hospital during this whole COVID thing. Um, he apparently had diabetes and didn't tell anybody. And he was a bachelor. He lived alone out in the boondocks. That's what he wanted to do. And he was the type of person that thrived on going to restaurants. He literally didn't cook anything because he liked going out to eat and hassling the waitresses. You know how old men are. You guys are, you guys are in that stage, some of you. And uh, that was that was his highlight of his day going out to eat three times a day he'd take the neighbors with him a lot of times and it was just like a social thing for him so with the shutdown he wasn't able to do that and none of the local restaurants offered takeout in his area so he took option number two which was his favorite at-home meal ramen noodles and cream of chicken soup and so that's what he was eating and um, he was losing a lot of weight and, and I didn't know any of this was going on because we're not allowed to travel during COVID to see family or anything unless you know for a fact medically challenged, which at the point going into quarantine, he wasn't. So, you know, we're trying to respect quarantine, but I guess the neighbors, they took him into the hospital and he was admitted. He was conscious when he was admitted, but then as soon as he got in there, he felt unconscious and just never really came back out of it. And then, Last night, he passed away from a heart attack. Now, the heartbreaking thing is that through this whole time, we haven't been able to see him because of quarantine, because of all the stipulations from our lovely governor. So, yeah, we couldn't say goodbye. He ended up dying alone in the hospital. It's going to be a little hit or miss with videos that might be a little scattered. I mean, we're still going to be doing stuff here, but it might not be as concise. So I'll keep you guys posted. And I guess for me, the hardest point was I showed him that military picture book that I had created years ago. And when he first read it, he was crying. And he looked at me and he said, you're going to make me one promise. You're going to get this book published and I'm going to get the first copy hot off the press and you're going to sign it. And I said, yeah, that, that sounds like a good plan. I'd be happy to give it to you. He was a... Um, military retiree uh, he fought in Vietnam so he really resonated with the story and so for me now that I finally got to the point where we're looking at you know taking the steps to get it published and now he won't get to see it it's just kind of hard because he was the one that advocated the most for the story and 
now he doesn't get to see it. So, appreciate all you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much for all of your encouragement. Oh, watch this last little bit because this is your clue into one of the surprises that we have in the works. Take care, guys.